Welcome to the Switch Blue Podcast. For a change of pace, this is Nathan Rogers, your host, and I'm joined today by Jake Mounsey. G'day, we have taken over the podcast from Alex. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is a uh, hijacking. Yeah. We've... H- how do you like your promotion from co-host to host? Oh, loving it. <laughs> Just going to take over every single time, not even like put it out. Like, hey, Alex, podcast is mine. Jake and I are taking over. <laughs> yeah, we're going to rebrand it as a D&D podcast. Let's do it. <laughs> so Nathan, Paladin, to be honest, space he would probably want to join. <laughs> oh, bit of fun. Oh. To be honest, though, Alex would probably want to join in a D and D podcast. <laughs> God damn it! Not even a minute in, and I've already derailed the podcast. That's going to be a hard record to beat. This is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so Jake, what have you been playing this week? Uh, I've been playing a few things, really. Um, the main thing being Smelter. I can't really talk about it that much because I'm reviewing it, so uh, embargoes and all that. But uh, good game, good game. I can. That's that's about as much as I can I can say at the moment. <laughs> Fresh change so, yeah. pace for reviews for oh, you. Yeah, because it's the last few. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I've been playing that. Um, uh, what else have I been playing? Uh, I, I I went back to Fire Emblem Three Houses a bit when my uh, PC needed to be, uh, you know, worked on because I was having like blue screen troubles with that for the past like yeah, month yeah. or so. I remember it was it I was a thing. having to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and since I, uh, yeah, since I have everything all hooked up to my PC, including my consoles, because of, you know, the stream and all that. Ah, Jackson like 15, yeah. just a second, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, do that later. Sh- shameless self-plug. Um, <laughs> yeah, because all of my shit was, like, hooked up to my PC, all I could do is actually use my Switch as a handheld console, which I believe is the first time I've done that in, like, two years? It's like... How, how do you go with the uh, handheld <laughs> version? Hey, man... Did you know that the Switch can be used as a handheld console? I did not. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I hear a lot of people had a lot of trouble uh, with the handheld version of Three Houses. Just like, you know. Because of the screen size and stuff? Yeah, screen size, the text size, and all that. So, personally, I found it fine. Yeah, I because I play mostly handheld. Yeah, cause yeah. It's easier to work things around. But like, I find it pretty easy in most cases. I, 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 I found it to be fine, but to be fair, I'm one of those people that, like, visually can't tell the difference between 30 FPS and 60 FPS. Yeah, so I'm mostly the same yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. And, so. and, you know, you can play it, you know, while you're eating dinner, laying yeah. in bed. Yeah. It, it's an easy game to pick up and put down. Yeah. That being said, because it's easy to put down, uh, once I got my PC back, I kind of forgot about the playthrough I was doing, <laughs> so I haven't touched <laughs> it in a while. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, some, uh, other things I've been playing. Now that my PC is back, I've been, uh, testing out some, uh, XCOM 2 modding, and also, uh, going back to my, what, like, 4,000th playthrough of Borderlands 2. Because you're obsessed with that game. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic game, and Borderlands 3 is bad. <laughs> Yeah, the writing is not good. <laughs> the writing's not good. The like the weapons are fun, but like they're too easy to get, so there's no like reward. No challenge to it's, it. Yeah, no challenge, no reward. It's oh, it's a mess. Like new DLC came out for it yesterday. I didn't buy it. It's like just yeah. don't care anymore. I really no, they don't. did a second uh, DLC pack that kind of went like oh yeah cool so that extra expensive version that i purchased is feels useless now the 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 most annoying thing about borderlands 3 though is like the dlcs themselves like the four dlc packs that you know the borderlands games are like known for borderlands 3's dlc packs are really good yeah but like everything around like the rest of the game just sucks oh it's such a shame such a shame. Well, I've been playing Monster Hunter Rise. Yeah, I Just bet you have. Almost like the rest constantly. of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Like, oh. Oh. I'm not going to say a lot because I've, I'm in the middle of doing the review. I'm almost finished. And yeah, I'm going to yeah. be doing a, um, a beginner guide. Like oh, how people right, haven't right. played it before. But it is 
so well done. Yeah. Like, top, top favorite game. Yeah, I, I've heard Switch nothing so but praise for Monster Hunter Rise, and I've seen it played, especially, like, like you came and visited me, like, the other week, and you showed me, like, how it plays in handheld mode. That is magic. Like, the, the load times in between, like, the gathering hub, like, and the village is barely existent. Ex- yeah, barely existent. It's, like, it is a black screen for half of a second. It's insane. Oh, like, oh, God. It's just so good. Like, it feels like I'm missing out not playing it. But, like, the thing is... Especially with the uh, hunting horn buffs. Mm, yeah. Old f***ing hunting horn made back in the days of Try. Yeah. <laughs> God, if you, if you guys thought playing the game on the DS was bad, imagine playing it on the Wii with a Wiimote nunchuck. That was my first yeah. experience into Monster Hunter. Yeah, but, um, like, I, yeah, I, I think I mentioned this last time I was on the podcast, but, like, I played so much Monster Hunter Try that, like, I burnt myself out on the franchise forever, pretty much. Which is a real shame. It is. Because... Yes. Yeah, because yeah, oh. it's like every time As like said, a new Monster Hunter game comes out. You are tempted to get into this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every time a new Monster Hunter game comes out, it's like, oh, here's all the cool shit you wish you had in uh, when you were playing Try. And I'm like, ah. mm. like, Especially with the new verticality in um, like wire bug movement. It's oh, it's so The fun. movement is insane. I kind of want it just for dog drifting. Yeah, dog drifting. <laughs> <laughs> Make a dog racing course. Oh, God. Just just turn every game into a kart racer and I'll, I'll play it. <laughs> yeah. Just like, uh, what's it, Yakuza 7? Oh, yeah, turn, yeah. <laughs> There's... I've also been playing uh, Say No More. Oh, what? So a... I did oh, this that was... in, like, a two-hour, three-hour game. It's very short. But it actually has, like, a like a positive meaning behind it. It's like, you know, say no. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, stop constantly agreeing to things just learn to say yes. no to things yeah 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 <laughs> and it does it in like a work environment where yeah yeah this, this world that they're in everyone works seven days a week yeah <laughs> it's like stuff like that it's like oh wow yeah no this it, it is a very nice game and in the world this like world where game crunch is ridiculous yeah yeah it is a good like you know hey look at this think about it Take your time to yourself. Mm. Enjoy yourself. But it's also like kind of expensive from what I saw. I think it was yeah, like yeah. 16 I think it was like twenty dollars Australian, something like that. I'm not wrong. Like, I might be wrong, don't quote me on it, but it was quite expensive. But yeah. good fun. Like it, it it seems like a good game. Oh, it is. It yeah. is. It's just obviously the way the only gameplay is saying no. Yeah. Or not saying no to things. But it, it's I don't know, it's the meaning behind it, it. It's it's one of those games that like, like if you see footage of it, like even then, it's like hard to explain yeah. how the game works. It's one of the ones you kind of have to play for yourself to really know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in addition to that, I am um, obviously you have uh, been doing this as well. The uh, latest Half Stone expansion. <laughs> oh yes, yes. This uh yeah this won't say expansions. too much on it, yeah. but it, mm. it's not too bad. <laughs> it's fine. There's some things that I really like, some things that irk me. To be fair, like Hearthstone always irks me. I'm yeah. like the only reason why I play Hearthstone now is sunk cost fallacy. I have put too much time <laughs> too and much money into it. Into it. So yeah, yeah I can't just really drop it new. No. It's same thing with Warcraft. Yes, I'm one of those people that still play World of Warcraft in 2021. I am insane. You're addicted. Yes, yes I am. <laughs> um, also have been helping Jace with uh, Super Mario Sunshine when he needs it. Oh. He's, he loves playing the Mario games. Yeah, he does. Thing is, like, I, dude, I need help playing Super Mario yeah. Sunshine. Sunshine is... <laughs> Sunshine can be brutal at times. Especially on this port. Yeah, I, I hear the port isn't the best. Yeah, the um, Sunshine can be really brutal. Yeah. I forgot how difficult it was. Dude, the Pachinko level. I actually didn't do too bad on that for him. 
Of course. Took me took me one time. Of course. And I worked out the trick to the sandbird level as well. This so. always <laughs> seems to happen whenever like I talk to you about like difficult levels in video games. It's like, oh dude, this level's so hard. It's like, oh, I didn't find it that hard. I oh, no, finished it, is, it like it first is a time. Bull, yeah. bull level. Yeah. It sucks. But it is because there's you have no control over it. Yeah. Almost. But the um the one level that I was just I was smashing my head against the wall was um that you have to get a giant watermelon in the beach level over to um the juice or whatever to get oh, the shine in it. Yeah, yeah. And just oh every time I moved it, it would get hit by those things, I'd flip it up in the air, I was like, Oh, I smashed my head into the wall. <laughs> oh there, there's there's a reason why uh most people like yeah, a lot of people talk about, you know, Mario sixty four or um galaxy over yeah you know sunshine 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 is fun like, don't get me it, wrong it's, it's a just... good game it's just like the other 3d mario games are significantly better yeah oh well, with that uh we'll wrap up our intros and head on to the uh, patreon plug and with this you can go one dollar a month to get the podcast two to three days early uh, it goes towards supporting the website, paying our writers, and keeping everything running. So please pay us money. Yes, money so would be get, very good. Thank you. So we can pay for more games. Yes. And when we reach the $100 a month goal, it will help make the podcast a weekly show, which we will be hijacking. <laughs> yeah. Our <laughs> podcast now. Exactly. But uh, it would be very much appreciated. And we do occasionally have a uh, $15 a month um, eShop gift card in the podcast. So. Definitely something worth listening to. So, moving on to the news. Monster Hunter Rise has sold over 5 million copies in its first week. Damn. That's impressive. Yes. Like, like oh, how, damn, man. How many, like, how many uh, copies did, uh, oh, I was about to say Rise. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, how many copies did uh, World, like, I, sell overall? I think it hit 15 million. So, like... This is a third of the way there in its first week. Yeah. World got really high sales. Like, the fact that it, it overtook Capcom's highest selling, like, sis, uh, series. Yeah. A highest selling game that Capcom has ever made. And Rise, and Capcom. Like, in its, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rise in its first week is already a third of the way there. That's yeah. insane. It is. And the fact that it is only on the Switch. Yeah, that too. Like, it makes me think how many people just bought a Switch for Rise. Yeah. Like, it it, it, it appeases both Monster Hunter crowds. It, it appeases, does. It, it appeases, like, the people like me who prefer it on the console, but, like, since the Switch is a handheld as well, it, like, it appeases those people that really enjoyed the uh, 3DS uh, Monster Hunter games. It's perfect. And it also blends the old style of Monta Monster Hunter with the world style of Monster Hunter. Yeah. Like, it is a perfect mix of, like, Monster Hunter for people. Man, I should really get Rise. <laughs> and it is probably the best one to, like, start off with as Yeah, well. yeah. Despite what other news sources say. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be... <laughs> yeah. That's going to be in my guide. Take that, Kotaku. <laughs> yeah. The, um, <laughs> going to do the village quest is your first option as a single player. Oh, Don't God, do gathering is... hub quests. Uh, oh. Like, oh. it's a low-hanging fruit, but come on. It gets funnier it was... every time. It was bad. <laughs> it gets funnier every time someone from Kotaku makes an easy mistake. Oh. Like, they didn't even touch that entire section of the game and still did a review on it. No, it's just like, no, it's fine. I'm just going to entirely do multiplayer stuff by myself. This game's hard. <sighs> oh, Professional God. writing. Professional. Well, either way, we'll move on to the next section, which is Mario 35th Anniversary and the... Um, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and Blade of Light have officially been removed from the eShop. Yay! Fun. By extension, though, you can no longer claim gold on the physical copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Why? 
Yeah, that's something that had me go, like, seriously? Like... Like, you can still buy the physical copies out in the shops. Like... Maybe not now, because, you know, it's been off shelves by now and people are scalping it. But, like... The... The idea of, like, Nintendo just, you know, publicly executing their own games is dumb in and of itself. But why remove like the ability for uh for uh cold that is yeah that's confusing in <laughs> multiple layers it's like i i love nintendo but god damn they can be so like brain they have some odd b- business practices <laughs> that is a <laughs> that is a very polite way to say that yes i mean we are a nintendo podcast so <laughs> i'll keep it polite <laughs> We we gotta be just a little bit biased, just a little uh, bit. But yeah, with that, uh, the Mario Thirty Five is gone to be replaced with Pac Man Ninety Nine. Honestly, I prefer that idea. Honestly, yeah. I prefer that. So it, it's uh, the Switch Online game, like um, Tetris Ninety Nine. So obviously, it's a free one. But yeah, interesting. Yeah, didn't like, expect that one to be coming. Yeah, that was, like, when you think about it, it makes sense, because Tetris yeah. 99, like, did so well. But Pac-Man, of all things? Yeah, it's... Like, it's I love me some Pac-Man, a... but I was, yeah, super not expecting that, like, in the slightest. Yeah, like, watching the trailer, I was like, huh, this actually looks kind of interesting. I'm yeah. not going to play it, probably, because those games don't interest me. Yeah, yeah, Battle like Royale-style games. Battle Royale-style. Yeah, no. Nah. But this one looks good, mm. especially if it's free on Switch Online. So it gives you a reason to go buy it. Yeah. Next up, we have the Odd World Collection was announced for May 27th. Oh, hello. I didn't see this. Yes. So um, the whole, I think it was like three games in one. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, but so yeah, like it like the was. first three Odd World games? I think it's the more recent ones. See, open link. Uh, yeah, Oddworld New and Tasty, Munch's Odyssey, and Strange's Wrath. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Like, I I don't really know all that much about the Oddworld franchise. I do know Strange's Wrath is, like, a fun game. It's very different from the rest of the franchise. I think it's I like mean, a the franchise third... has been going on for a long time. Yeah, I think it's like a third person shooter. Huh. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, Abe's, yeah, Abe's Odyssey and like all those other stuff is like kind of like a platforming puzzle game. I mean, you can't go wrong with more games on the Switch. Yeah. And speaking of new games on the Switch, Neo: The World Ends with You. Yeah, it's where we. <laughs> I'll leave this to <laughs> you. <laughs> good, good, good old Twerwy. Oh, oh God. Uh... So, <laughs> yeah, you leave this to me, despite like the fact that, like, yeah, j- just because I like Twerry doesn't mean I know all the details. I mean, like, I don't know a lot of the details. I just know it's coming out July twenty seventh. Right, but I, you know, you you were all on this when it got announced. Like, no, nope, I'm taking this. No one yeah, can take it. Please yeah, let me take this. Yeah, Al- Alex posted <laughs> up the um uh uh the release date thing because like it's what we do. It's like, hey. Here's a link to this uh, to the trailer. Here's when it comes out. Who wants it? Like seconds. I'm like mine, <laughs> mine. Because <laughs> like, like I like I was had I was driving at the time, <laughs> and my watch went buzz, 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 buzz. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like mine. <clears throat> I mean, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll 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 have it if uh, no one else is uh, interested. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm I'm one of the few people that actually played Twerwee back on the DS, like the original one. And uh, as as much as I love that game, its controls are so bad. It's like they're so notoriously bad that like the game has had multiple different like uh, re-releases that remove the you know the dual screen like touch yeah. screen controls and all that. But the annoying thing is. The game doesn't work without it. Yeah. So like they're inferior to like so I'm just glad to see a new Twerwe game that doesn't Designed have for a that. single screen. Yeah. And like the best thing is like along with this, 
the uh, World Ends With You uh, anime is also being made. Yes. So there's, which means you can get the story. Yeah, yeah there's literally no the reason to play the original game at all. Which, like, yeah, that kind of sucks. But, like, it's a game that legit hurts you to play. Yeah, so, like Kingdom, like, uh, was it uh, Kid Icarus Uprising? Yeah, yeah. So, like, you kind of have to watch the anime if you want to know what's going on with Neo Twoey, because like that some of those characters are characters in the first one. <laughs> so, yeah, there's they're gonna be slightly connected, but like, God, just oh, like the game. You're, you're ready for it. The, the game's music, its aesthetic, it's like. It, it's Kingdom Hearts mixed with Jet Set Radio, for God's sake. It's the perfect game. Two basically. franchises I love to death. Oh, I can't wait for this. Now on a sour note, Balan Wonderworld debuted in with under 2,100 copies in Japan. Now that sucks. That's... Like, that's, that's okay. a real shame. Early thoughts on the game were, uh, like, I know Alex played the demo, he was not interested in it, but, like, that is a really bad amount. Yeah, like... like I know it's just the Japan market, but I think overall it wasn't very well, but, like, just 2,100 copies in Japan. Yeah, like, I, I remember when uh, Battle of Wonderworld, like, was first announced, uh... Well, I remember part of it. I, I, I believe... It, yeah, I believe it was, it was during direct, the... I'm pretty sure. It was. It wasn't a direct. It was. I believe it was actually during a um, like the announcement for the Xbox Series X or something. Oh yeah, yeah, and like it, but it only showed up in like the Japanese like announcement for the console of all things. So yeah. like no one knew about it until like a day later, and it's like, whoa, what the hell is this crazy colorful game? So like yeah, I, it people, looks really yeah, cool. People but... were excited for it because like it looked like a nice colorful platformer that like you know made by you know the guy that made Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> and it's supposed to kind of be like knights or something like that. And what happened to it? Yeah, it, it I, did not like, go well. Yeah, I I hear its controls are just kind of like. I think one button does everything. Yeah, I remember hearing that, and that's never a good thing. Yeah. Uh, kind of just fell apart. Next up, we have uh, Platinum Games announces Soul Crester, which was in their April Fool's thing, and it's a new shoot 'em up as a real game. That's cool and all, but where's Bayonetta 3? Eventually that'll come out. Day 1200 and. Like sixty something, I believe, and still no new uh, news about Bayonetta three. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's almost as bad as Metroid Prime four. Yeah, yeah, but like, and the only news on that was, hey, we're restarting the d- game development. Yeah, yeah, but hey, more Platinum games. That's that's cool. Platinum makes really good games. I that, believe. That they do. Yeah, I, if I remember correctly, I think this is connected to a super old. Uh, game that Platinum Games made yeah. like a decade yeah, or so it ago. Is. And I think they're um, I think they're actually c- continuing the series with this as well, like properly. Yeah. And we also had No More Heroes live stream, which oh, announced I miss the this. Killian Dollar trilogy containing <laughs> all three games. Oh, <laughs> kill! Yeah, that that that's apt. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure if it's been announced since I looked up this story, but uh, there is no Western release date announced yet. Yeah, that's a shame. Pro- pro- probably later. But there, like, there probably will be, but yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, That that's that's a smart idea, selling all three games, because like... Exactly. Because like, the only consoles that I believe like the other No, uh, no More Heroes games were actually on was the Wii and the PS3. Yeah. So, like... That's two generations ago. Yeah, it can't really get those games easily anymore. So, like, yeah, this is no. perfect timing. It It is a good way to do it. As an editor note, uh, No More Heroes 1 and 2 are actually available on Nintendo Switch. So you can actually buy them prior, play them, and then play No More Heroes 3 when it comes out. And the big news for the uh, the two the Fortnite is 
Nintendo joined the digital only E3 event this year. Whoa. Do we so need we've got E3? E3, anymore? Fu- E3 confirmed, though. Yeah, E3 confirmed, yes, but as we learned from last year, do we really need E3? I mean, we don't, but it, it is good to still have it. Yeah. But to get that all in one localized place instead of being like, oh, hey, over here. No, over here. Hey, look at us over here. Mm. It's good to have it one localized space on a schedule. Yeah, true, true. It's it's just like e- every time I think about E three, I don't think of like actual game announcements and all that. All I think of is like the stupid crap that happens on stage, like people like trying. My body to... is ready. <laughs> yeah, the my body is ready. The uh, the Wii music, like dude flailing oh. around, <laughs> like trying to play drums. Um. <sighs> Uh, Andrew WK playing at the Bethesda announcement for, uh, what was it, Rage 2? Oh, yeah, which, that's it. Which, like, yeah, I'm a fan of Andrew WK, but those people in the audience were not there for him. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were, they, they looked so, so uncomfortable. Awkward. They looked so uncomfortable. And, like, you had, like, the random one or two dudes that actually, like, enjoy his music just rocking out like crazy, like, sticking out like a sore thumb. And then was it the uh, Mario Rabbids moment with the guy crying? <laughs> oh god! Like, <sighs> I, it's kind of a meme with me that like I hate Mario and Rabbids because like like XCOM, but yeah, like I, it, it's a good game. It, it's a good oh, game, it all things considered. But like, this is what you're passionate about, man. <laughs> This, rabbits. This, this rabbits. is this is the thing that brings a tear to your eye. Sticking like the video game equivalent of minions into a Mario game. All right, yeah. dude. All right. But yeah, it'd be it'd be good to have E three come back, even though you know you won't have your stage show moments like that. Yeah. Well, we'll just have but to say. Hopefully, we do have yeah. confirmation so far that Sony has decided not to join, um, and EA, like always wants to play their own game. Yeah. So next up we have the uh, Indie Roundup. So a few games that you might not have heard of that are coming up. We have Colourful, um, as in Waterfall, Colourful. Um, uh, Colourful. 16th of, yes, 16th of the April. Um, my only point on this game is it has no U in colour. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were talking about this like we yeah we were talking about this before the podcast. We we're both trying to look for the game, and we're like spelling it with a U, like in like normal people, and yeah. like we couldn't find it. It was. <sighs> I just don't like the uh, O R spelling of color. Yeah, it, it looks too weird. Okay, uh, so next in our indie roundup, we have Smelter on the twenty second of the fourth. It's good. Buy it. <laughs> Seeing as you can't say much about it. I, I, I really want to. I really want to, but I can't. I, I have to wait another, well, as of uh, recording this, another 10 days until I can actually talk about it. Exactly, on the release date. Uh, so, next up we have Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. Man, that that game's title sounds like a bunch of people from Twitter making, like, a meme and then turned it into a video game. Especially considering I saw it and my first thing I thought I saw was Trump Boy commits <laughs> tax evasion. Man, and I thought I was the dyslexic one. To be fair, I wasn't the only one that saw that. <laughs> but it looks like a neat little game to play. Yeah. And then uh, on the 23rd of the 4th, we have Dungeons and Gravestones. Uh, didn't, now, yeah, didn't someone uh, review that? We did get the trailer of um, this in uh, review. I don't think we anyone has it yet. Nah, right. And Gravestones, just to check. Yeah, it could have sworn like someone got it. Uh, maybe they did. I thought I put my name down for it, but I haven't been given it yet. <laughs> yeah, it's a roguelike. I remember that. I think it's like a top-down kind of uh, dungeon crawler. Nah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not. It's isometric dungeon crawler. Kind of has that Minecraft art style to it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it looks it looks neat and fun to play. One, one that you can go through over and over and over again. 
So there, yeah, that's it for our Andy Roundup. Um, next up, we have the Patreon questions where uh, we normally answer one question a podcast uh, and it, the priority goes to your $1 a month patrons, which, but you can also ask questions on our social medias and in our Discord. But I'm going to break the formula this time because this is a hijack podcast and I'm going to add the uh, one question from the Discord. Because uh, this is probably more relevant to someone asking you from your Discord. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Uh, so we are going to start with uh, the one that Alex put in for us, which was, if you could create a new peripheral for the Switch, which would it be? This was by Jason Newman. Auto blow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one that I thought of was um, the, like, Joy Cons, but like Pro Controller, which has already been made. Yeah, yeah. Which were made for Monster Hunter. I'm like, okay, that's that's my peripheral. I'm good. <laughs> Just, but yeah, other than that, there wasn't much I could think of. Um, like, yeah, my my answer is is a joke, but like, I will say, when I uh, when I was first approached to uh, write for Switch Bureau, I had to pick a game for like a test review. Yeah, and all that. i uh, looking through the uh, you know the indie games section of the uh, uh, yeah of the uh, eShop. Oh boy, there's a lot of lewd games. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, an auto blow would be a really good peripheral for the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and that e- the eShop layout is kind of hard to go for as well. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't help. No, but yeah, there is a lot of lewd games you could just oh hey here's one that's very easy to find but uh also to cross promote the discord because we do have a discord now uh demo1134 hey demo what's up what are your thoughts on pokemon making gen 4 remakes yeah i'm sure this is already being talked about a bit since you know yeah i think we talked yeah. about it when they announced it yeah it's just like i wasn't there for that so he's probably yes. asking me since he's part of my discord as well um, that's why i thought i'd bring this one up on yes. this podcast so i really like gen 4 i really do i'm quite disappointed with what has been shown so far yeah the art style is what's putting me off a lot Cause because, like, every time we've had a Pokemon remake, the remake has taken on the art style of whatever gen was, you know, current at the time. Like, yes. you know, Fire Red, Leaf Green was Gen 3. While, so um, they looked yeah, Heart like Gold, Gen 3. Yeah, Heart Gold, Soul Silver was Gen 4. So I was I was expecting, you know, like, A Gen Sword 4 and Shield to style. look like, yeah, to look like Sword and Shield. And came out looking like that, I'm like, yeah. Like, like I'll still play it. I'll still oh, yeah. play it. I, I, I love Gen Four, but like, it's not as exciting as what I expected it to be. Yeah, and that and is it's... yeah, that is my thoughts on Gen Four. Like, I knew they were going to make it. Obviously, yeah, a lot of yeah. fans were wanting it, but it was just I wasn't expecting the chibi art style. And that's yeah. where it has me like, I might not replay this one. Yeah. But, you know, if they do do the uh, platinum route, like they did with Gold and Silver, like Heart Gold, Soul Silver, where they actually include the additional content that was in that was Crystal. In yeah, yeah. That, it might that be would be good. That but if they good. do the Alpha Sapphire uh, Omega Ruby treatment where... They don't. They don't. I mean, they did add new content, but they didn't do the Battle Tower... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It really does feel like Pokemon is just kind of, you know, going through the numbers at this point. Like, yeah, they yeah. got like the Arceus thing going on. That's that's that new was exciting. Neat. That that would be cool when you know it's more than just a concept running at three frames per second. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but Ooh, like, concept, oh boy, concept did not look good. No, no, that. That needed to be, like, announced another, like, six months ahead. Like, it needed yeah. another six months before, like... It a, should have been done at E3, yeah. honestly. It, it should have. It really should have. That would have been a much, like, oh my god, look at this at E3 kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it, that, that would have been really good for, like, an E3 announcement. But, like, 
I think there was like a huge gap in between, you know, Pokemon game announcements. So also, I don't think kind of the, the Pokemon has ever been announced at E three, like ever. Yeah, it's always been on their own terms outside of E three. Yeah, but uh, I think that's it for the uh, Patreon questions. And next, we shall move on to name that game, everyone's favorite segment. Fun. Because it was hard enough when it was like you and me naming the, uh, like trying to figure out the game last time I was here. Now I gotta do it by myself. Yeah, it is hard when you do it by yourself. But Ugh. this one was chosen by Jace. Uh, of course it was. So I at least know it's something on your Switch. Yes. Thing is, <laughs> so it I, is on my I Switch. Thing is, I don't remember what you have on your Switch, so I might as not know at all. True. Um, but I he chose it, and it's not too difficult this time. Unlike Alex's, um, what was it? Celeste? Celeste, yeah. Game that neither of, neither of us had played. <laughs> okay, uh, so if you don't know the rules to this, it is ten clues. So you get one, two guesses uh, between clue one to five, two guesses between six and nine, and another guess at clue ten. You also have the yes-no question in the lifeline, followed by the Switch Boo lifeline. Because if you don't know why that is that order, listen to episode one, where we basically stole... The, we used the Switch Boo lifeline to steal the name of the question in the yes-no. So instead of using yes, we went, oh, hey, is this game? And he went, yes. <laughs> right. So, so it was another, a fun moment. In, in other words, the game is like twenty questions. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But um, so no using the internet, obviously, and no using the Switch library, which I use when I was playing by myself to steal a win. Because <laughs> <laughs> you are a cheat. <laughs> hey, it was not in the rules at the time. <laughs> okay, are you ready to start? Ready. Okay, number one. Released 5th of October, uh, so 5th of October 2018. Okay, so it's relatively new. It's in the uh, second year of the Switch. Se- second year of the Switch. Um, Has single player and multiplayer function- functionality. I think I already know what it is. Rated 76 on Metacritic. This might give it a bit of a clue. There is 20 playable characters, with 16 of them returning characters. Huh. That was not what I thought in the slightest. And number five was announced at Nintendo's E3 2018 presentation. Oh, what would that be? So you have two guesses, a yes-no question, and the Switch Boo lifeline. Before we move on to the next clues. Uh, Obviously you can say... Yeah. Oh, yeah, and you, before I, I forget, you can swap those lifelines for other guesses, which no one has done yet. Right. Um, God. This is a platformer. No. No, I didn't think so. So that's your lifeline gone. God damn. Hmm. <laughs> uh... I guess technically you have one guess because you guessed Mario Odyssey in a way. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the only thing that I could think of that has, you know, a whole bunch of selectable characters is both, like, Mario Kart and... Is it Mario Kart? No, it's not Mario Kart. Okay, not Mario Kart. Okay, so it's not that. Okay. Yeah, my- I'll move on to number six. Has sold over 13 million copies... Right, so very successful game. Described as a complete refresh of the franchise. It's not a reboot, a refresh. Oh, what would it be? Is this two little characters for Smash? Yes. Yes yeah. it is. It'd be yeah, it'd be two little characters for Smash. It's not yeah, as you said, it's not Mario Kart. No, it's not. So, god damn it! What other characters would it be? Uh, games, I mean. Oh my I'll god. move on to number seven. Uh, number eight. Yes. P- 
players use a single Joy-Con in all modes of the game. Mario Party. Correct. Hey, there we go. Super. Uh, what, what was? Yeah, what was the uh, new one called Super Mario Party? Yes, Super yeah, Mario that, Party. That's it. That's it. Oh, I forgot that. I forgot that game even came out. <laughs> uh, so the last two clues were utilizes HD rumble and motion controls, and this is the first title in the franchise history to have online functionality. Yeah, I pr- still probably wouldn't have gotten that. <laughs> I thought the single Joy-Con would be the one to be like, yeah, that'll yeah, do it. Yeah, that, that and was... Mm. Just to play it, because uh, Alex did his own lifeline for this, I sent him what I had done, and this is his clue. Steak. That is all. <laughs> Wait, His what? clue was steak. That is all. Steak. Do you want to know why? Why? Because there's the mini game where you flip the cube of steak. Oh, I wouldn't have gotten that at all if I used. I that. didn't get that when he sent, like when he told me that's what he wanted to put. I'm like, yeah, I didn't get that. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then I said, thanks, like, Alex, oh, you... thanks. <laughs> I, I said, like, maybe, maybe, um, something like, oh, master the art of flipping the steak. Like, no, but yeah, no steak. steak. <laughs> No! But you got it. You got it. Thanks, boss. <laughs> <laughs> like we said, we've hijacked the podcast. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if it, Honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that, like, it was a game that your kid picked on your Switch, I wouldn't have got it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Although the single Joy-Con may have given it away. May have, but probably not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you played this on your own stream, didn't you? Yeah, I did, but yeah. that was years ago, and I haven't thought about Super Mario Party <laughs> since then. Well, we'll move on to our socials plug, and then you can plug yourself. So, um, if you want to follow us, uh, we have our own Discord, which is uh, discord.gg slash T-J-H-G-N-U-V-Y, because we don't have a lot of uh, links for it, I think. Yeah, we don't have a custom. Yeah, we don't us. have a custom link for it yet. Yes. Oh, that is our custom. That is our safe link for it. Oh yeah, but it's least. not like you know yeah. Discord, blah 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 yeah. slash Switchaboo. Yeah, which would be nice to have it eventually. Uh, we can find us at f- uh, Facebook slash Switchaboo, uh, on Twitter at Switchaboo News, Instagram at Switchaboo, and on Patreon slash Switchaboo. And would you like to p- uh, plug yourself here? Sure thing. So, outside of Switchaboo, I also stream on Twitch.tv. You can catch me at Twitch.tv dot, yeah, Twitch.tv slash Jaxic15, that is J-A-X-E-K 15. Uh, it's probably the closest we're going to get for a while to, like, an actual Switchaboo, you know, Twitch stream for a while. So, I, I, I occasionally play some of the games that I review on there, so... But yeah, like you did stream the, Stubbs on there. I did stream Stubbs the Zombie. Great game. It, it I, is basically I, dependent yeah. on embargoes. Yeah, d- dependent on embargoes. I have a whole bunch of games that like are currently under embargo, but like once they're out of embargo, I'll probably like do like a roundup day. So yeah. like I, I, I still yeah, I gotta gotta think of a day to like stream, you know, Smelter, Fire S Ultra, Drive By, you know, all those other stuff. But uh yeah. But, hey, this is what I played. Come check yeah, out. This, the this is what I played, this is what I reviewed. Yeah. But uh yeah, at the at the moment I am currently playing both uh Fallout New Vegas and Yakuza Zero, so if you're interested in either of those, you know where to find me. With uh Oh well, this isn't gonna be coming out, but you're playing CTR tonight. Oh and yes, this will be coming yeah. out on Friday for your average person, and then um was it World of Warcraft on Wednesdays? Yes. And was you're playing DS games, isn't it? Yeah, I play. On yeah, Sunday. I play DS games that uh people on my Discord, uh, you know, vote for at the end of each week. But like currently at the moment, what is being uh what is voted for is Kingdom Hearts uh three five eight over two days, which is one of my favorite DS games because I, as mentioned earlier on in the stream, I am a Kingdom Hearts fanboy. 
So, yeah. like, I'm going to be going through that for the next couple of weeks before we move on to something else. We're nearly, yeah, we're actually nearly through the uh, list of DS games, so that's going to be, like, you know, retired, and then I'm going to start doing PS1 games after that, so that'll be fun. So if you're interested in PS1 games, or live in that nostalgia... Yeah, if you're as old as we are. <laughs> uh, oh, man, just no- nothing makes me feel old than like someone showing up in my stream and talking about their first game console being a Wii. Yeah, that one hurt. That, that one really hurt. That hurt. <sighs> like, oh, that one really hurt so much. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, you're 13? You're only supposed to be 18 to watch my stuff, come on. Uh, anything else you'd like to plug? Uh, nothing really. Nothing else really. Well, with that, we are going to wrap up. Thank you so much for listening to the uh, Hijack Switchaboo podcast this week. And uh, for the conclusion, we're going to leave it you with Jellyfish by Drop Bear Bites uh, with their upcoming title Broken Record. Ooh, no Broken Roads. I got. Because the song record. So Broken Road <laughs> is the upcoming game. It is an Australian game. Professional. And it, is com- Professional. it is composed Open. by Tim Sunderland, which you can find him at Sunday Sunday, as in like Sunday the day, Sunday the ice cream, 87. And follow Drop Bear Bites over on Twitter at Drop Bear Bites. And thank you for coming.